Hello and welcome to Car Retrospective, where today we'll be examining a car that seems to have appreciated quite heavily over time, the Subaru Impreza. Let's have a look. Since beginning their car manufacturing business in the mid-50s, Subaru had been under numerous different management structures. Their main priority was building cars for the general public that anyone could come to own and use. However, after the company was partly acquired by Nissan in 1968, the rate at which they introduced new cars, such as the Rex in 1972, the XT in 1975 and the Legacy in 1989, showed a steady change in the style of cars. They aided this change with an entry into Rally Sport. Having a sporting legacy in the company would show the consumers that they didn't just have to produce people cars. However, their efforts weren't that rewarding. They saw little success with their numerous entries, and it looked like their rallying legacy would be coming to an end quite soon. Until a new icon was to show up. The Subaru Leone was introduced in 1971. While it was popular, by the time the 90s were rolling around, the aging design was not able to stay as popular as it once was. Therefore, a replacement was required. On the 22nd of October 1992, Subaru announced that they were beginning production on a brand new compact car, which is a size grouping of cars between subcompact and mid-size cars. The Impreza, which was supposedly originally named the Loyal, was the replacement for the aging Subaru Leon. It was offered in 1.5, 1.6, 1.8 and 2 litre variations. One of the unique selling points of the Impreza was its use of Subaru's own long-standing boxer engine, which sees the pistons move in and out in unison, and is regularly compared to boxers hitting their gloves together before a match, hence the name. This configuration requires no counterweights due to the counter movement of each piston. Upon release, the Impreza was offered as either a sedan or an estate version. 1997 saw the release of the short-lived Coupe Impreza, but the most well-known trim level of the car is of course the WRX, which stands for World Rally Experimental. It launched alongside the other version in 1992. It featured stiffened suspension, all-wheel drive and a turbocharged engine. The WRX RA was also unleashed, which was an even more hardcore version, choosing to omit things like air conditioning and electric windows for a truly uncomfortable experience. As previously mentioned, up until the Impreza's introduction, Subaru's rallying wins were minimal. However, after signing on some up-and-coming drivers like, uh, I don't know, Colin McRae over here, getting a new sponsorship with State Express 555, a tobacco manufacturer, as well as ditching the older, heavier legacy for the sportier, faster Impreza, Subaru was finally ready for a fresh start. And a fresh start they got. They immediately placed fifth in the 1993 World Rally Championship, keeping up with the big boys like Lancia and Ford. Their first win was in the eighth event of the season, at Rally New Zealand, by the hands of McRae. Other drivers like Ari Vatanen and Marku Allen also powered the Impreza along. 1994 continued this growth, with event wins in Greece, Britain and New Zealand. They also managed second in the overall championship, and Saints, a new driver for Subaru, came second in the drivers' championship. 1994 also saw the introduction of the WRX STI, a further upgraded WRX with tuned engines, transmissions and suspension. Back in the world of rally, Saints and McRae became the powerhouse behind the Subaru World Rally Team. In the 1995 season, Saints took wins at Rally Portugal, Monte Carlo and Catalonia, where Subaru team managed first, second and third, dominating the podium. McRae did well too, winning Rally New Zealand and the RAC Rally. McRae eventually did win out over Saints overall, who left at the end of the season for the Ford World Rally Team. Nevertheless, Subaru took their first ever World Championship title, although this was partly due to the fact that Toyota were disqualified for using illegal turbo restrictors. 
McRae also earned his well-deserved driver's title. The Subaru World Rally team then maintained their successes. Both 1996 and 97 saw the Team Take Championship wins number 2 and 3. Plus, in 1997, the team actually managed to earn 8 out of the 14 wins in the championship, which was no easy feat. This third championship victory coincided with Subaru's 40th anniversary, so in commemoration, Subaru launched the 22B. Only 424 examples were built. The 400 built for Japan was supposedly sold out in just two days, and the rest were exported to the UK and Australia. 1998 would have been number four, but a number of things went wrong for the team this year, and they only got third. At the end of the season, McRae left the team to join his old co-driver Saints at the Ford Rally team, supposedly lured by the brand new Focus WRC. More importantly, however, at the turn of the century, Subaru introduced the second generation Impreza. Starting in 2000, they began manufacturing what is nicknamed the Bug Eye, due to its bug-like headlights. The new boxer engine made 227 horsepower, and was regularly compared by the car's advertisements to the current BMW M3 or the Audi S4. The WRX and STI models also saw their reintroductions at this point, and finally made their way over to the US, where it proved to be instantly popular. Of course, this wasn't the definitive second generation Impreza. Throughout its seven year run until 2007, it saw three iterations, though they were only cosmetic. The Bug Eye was replaced in 2002 by the Blob Eye, which was designed by Peter Stevens, who, as you may know, previously designed the Lotus Esprit and the McLaren F1, so quite a good resume, actually. However, this was then replaced once again in 2005 by the Hawkeye. There was also a rebadge in the form of the Saab 92X, although it was only shipped as an estate car. In 2001, Subaru debuted the second gen Impreza in the WRC. As well as featuring four doors as opposed to the previous two found on the first gen, it also had improved aerodynamics, weight distribution and a lower centre of gravity. 2001 maintained the fresh lineup of drivers that Subaru had built. Most notably were the two star drivers, Richard Burns and Peter Solberg. Subaru had a fair start with their new model. No outright constructors titles, but they did manage to get Burns and Solberg their drivers titles in 2001 and 2003 respectively. <laughs> As for the team itself, they were doing well. No outright wins, as previously said, third in 2004, fourth in 2005, third in 2006, etc, etc, you get the point. But it's also important to note that as well as this great record in rallying, the Impreza had become a frontrunner in a completely different form of motorsport. When the WRX was finally imported to the US in 2000, it effectively opened the floodgates. A whole host of other sporty cars found their way onto the freedom soil, such as the Focus RS and the Lancer Evo. This meant a community centred around JDM, Japanese domestic market, grew in the US, and today it's grown large enough to rival even the fan bases for both traditional muscle and for those sweet European exotics, which that's quite good in my opinion. Many Many would argue that this is thanks large in part to the WRX. One thing people were not happy about, however, was the third gen Impreza, launched in 2007. Supposedly, Subaru began to fear that, despite the Impreza's popularity, it was beginning to fall behind its main competitors in the Japanese market due to its inherent aggressive styling. The third gen, therefore, has a much more subdued look. Even worse, the STI was only offered as a hatchback, which replaced the much-loved estate build, and a lot of fans were not happy with this. Power was now locked at 170 horsepower, and it was fair to say that this new revitalised launch of the Impreza hadn't exactly worked as Subaru had hoped. In 2009, the Impreza was modified to try and reintroduce some much-needed features. 
like some visual modifications, improved suspension and an upgraded engine of 265 horsepower, known in the UK as the WRX-S, and in 2011 the STI was finally available as a four-door sedan, as it should be in my opinion. Around this time, a whole host of WRX variants began showing up. The R205 was a much upgraded version which aimed to be one of the best road going cars on the market, and of course, the 2011 Cosworth STI, also known as the CS400, was legendary. Only 75 units were produced for the UK market, sitting at a less humble 395 horsepower, and also featured the much loved Cosworth badge. In the same year, the fourth gen Impreza was launched, but the WRX version didn't arrive until 2014. The styling of the fourth gen is heavily contested. Personally, I think it looks just as good as the other ones in its own unique way. The XV variant was also introduced here, but we only really care about the WRX. First of all, Subaru decided to drop the Impreza name entirely for the WRX, the car now simply being known as the Subaru WRX. Catchy! It was also fitted with a 2.5 litre engine making 268 horsepower. The STI was uprated to 305 horsepower, and a specially modified STI was able to lap the Isle of Man circuit in just 17 minutes and 35 seconds at the hands of driver Mark Higgins in 2013 which was a world record. As for other motorsports, well, rallying hadn't been going too well for them. In fact, in 2008, it was announced that Subaru were no longer competing in the WRC. It came as a shock to many, but admittedly, they were no longer anywhere near as successful as they had been in the late 90s and early 2000s. However, there are rumours flying around that Subaru may be returning to the sport in 2020. We'll just have to see how that turns out. Elsewhere, the fifth and current generation of the Impreza was launched in 2016. It retained a lot of the styling the fourth gen presented, simply modernising some aspects. The WRX, of course, did not release alongside the vanilla Impreza. In fact, it hasn't even been released to this day. But considering it is now a separate model, it makes sense. The Visiv concept, I believe is how it's pronounced, does shed some light on what the new WRX may look like, but no details about the engine or other specs have been released, although supposedly this WRX is going to be a hybrid. It's expected to be officially announced either this year or in 2021. The future is likely bright for the WRX. And there it is, the Subaru Impreza. And that was a rich history, but you know, rich histories tend to lead to great cars, and I think the Impreza is a fantastic little thing. It made concepts like massive wings, hood scoops, and just general crazy designs much more mainstream. As well as this, it had no trouble being a respectable family car, it could tear up the tarmac at the street race with ease, and of course, it was once one of the greatest machines in rally sport. And that's saying something. Well, thanks for watching that video. Um, if you'd like to support me more, I have a Patreon where just £1 a month would be a massive help. And I also have an active Instagram account and a neat little Discord server. Links in the description below. Again, thank you for watching and take care.